Thank you very much, Ero. I hope there's some attention left after lunch. First Lady, Mrs. Caris, dear art lovers, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for the fantastic organization from the Konrad Maggi Foundation. It's really a great pleasure to be here in this very nice room. And also thank you for my colleagues for these uh, great uh, lectures, because now you have the kind of frame with the most important uh, items of attitude for, from the Romanticism to the contemporary art in, in the 1920s. And so I can continue to go a little bit more in the details, perhaps. Um, today, about 50 paintings by Konrad Maggi with Baltic Sea motifs are known. He originally traveled to Sarema for the first time in the summer of 1913 to be treated for medical reasons. Finally, this day became very important for his art. In the next summer, he came back. The two summers of 1913 and 14 by the sea were some of the most important intense periods of his art. Many of the paintings he did on Sarema and the small offshore island of Vilsandi with his striking lighthouse are now among his masterpieces. A few later Baltic motifs from the coastal village of Kluga complete this group of works. With their contrasting brushstrokes, Maggie's Baltic Sea pictures are probably stylistically most closely related to coast landscapes by the early Piet Mondrian. In my lecture, however, I would like to try to place Maggie's Baltic Sea pictures in relation to the German artist group Die Brücke, the bridge. The young artist from the Brücke turned away from the metrop metropolises to, of Dresden and Berlin in the years immediately after, before the First World War and found completely new motives on some unspoiled beaches of the Baltic Sea, which today belongs to the canon of German Expressionism. Die Brücke was a group of artists who are regarded as important representatives of Expressionism and as pioneers of classical modernism. It was founded in Dresden 1905 by the four architectural students Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, Fritz Bleil, Erich Heckel, and Karl schmidt rodloff The group dispersed in Berlin in May 1913, but continued to influence the development of German Expressionism. Other members were Max Pechstein, Otto Müller, the Swiss Kuno Amiet, and briefly Emil Nolde and Kees van Dongen. In their 1906 manifesto, the Brücke artist wrote, I quote, with faith in development in a new generation of creators as well as enjoyers, we call all youth together. As youth who carry the future, we want to gain freedom of arms and freedom of life from the well-established older forces. Everyone belongs to us who directly and genuine reproduces what urges him or her to create." Quote end. This direct and genuine creation can be found, among other things, in the Baltic Sea pictures from the Brücke artists. The turn of the Brücke artists from the cities to the beaches of the Baltic Sea is an important phenomenon in German Expressionism. And I would like to examine in my lecture whether Maggie can be uh, counted among this phenomenon. We know that he had, traveled, had to travel through Germany for several days to get to Paris or to Italy. He may have visited exhibitions in Berlin, Hamburg, or Dresden and Munich, and it's possible that he saw exhibitions of the Brücke on these occasions. Already in the years around 1900, tourism at the German coast on the Baltic Sea was strongly developed. Railways, hotels, as well as bathing establishments were now attracting even broader groups of society to travel the so-called Sommerfrische. Greater prosperity in society, new rights for the working class, and an awareness 
of the health benefits of bathing in the sea contributed to the growing attraction of the Baltic resorts. Medical treatment, like Maggie got on the island of Sarema, was part of it. The pleasures of bathing in Imperial Germany, however, had little to do with our present-day ideas of seaside holidays. In 1914, for example, the author Franz Kafka wrote in his diary in the harbor town of Travemünde, afternoon on the beach, criticized as indecent by bare feet. This is very strange for us to understand, but there were so strict rules. There were very strict rules concerning physical freedom to show bare skin, how to change clothes, how to behave in the water and on the beaches. However, the members of the artist group Die Brücke were looking for something quite different from these photographs. Far away from academies and metropolises, they were looking for untouched nature in which they could depict naked bodies in harmony with nature. They envisioned, the, uh, they envisioned an ideal of harmony between bathing, nudism, artistic creation, between men and nature, which was strictly forbidden at the official bathing spots. And here, for the bigger picture, I brought some woodcuts from uh, Paul Gauguin from the Noah Noah series from 1894-96, uh, when he was on Tahiti. He was the first artist really to make this dream happen, to travel to paradise. Later, uh, and he was exhibited in Germany for the first time in 1908, which is quite important for the Brücke artist. And later, actually, Emil Nolde and Max Pechstein, they followed him to the South Sea in 1913, 1914. And of course, it all also belongs, and Timo was in it, uh, to Nietzsche, the idea of the new man, of course. But back to the artist. Moreover, this idea stood in contrast to the reality of the time before the First World War in Germany, which was characterized by the technical, industrial upheaval of everyday life, speed, new means of communication and transport, and not least, military armament. Inspired by the European artist colonies since the 1880s, the Brücke artist stays on the Baltic generally represent a counter-reaction to the mass culture in the time. And here I show um, the spot where Ernst Ludwig Kirchner was in the summer 1913 and, uh, 1913 and 14 with this lighthouse here, very similar to Sarima. And this is one of his photographs. And here you see naked people in the waves which was completely forbidden, of course, in the official beaches there. So nobody knows about this. And here I have more or less the same slide with Konrad Maggi on the shore with the lighthouse and one of his fantastic works. To come straight to the point, there are major differences between Maggi's Baltic Sea paintings and those of the Brücke artists. For Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, uh, Karl schmidt rodloff Max Pechstein and Erich Hecke, the creation of the naked human being in nature, quotation, was a central concern of their art, as we have seen in some earlier slides. They wanted to unite man and nature into a harmonious entity. And we do not find this focus on human beings in Maggie's paintings from the Baltic Sea. However, through the depictions of lonely lighthouses, cottages, and single fishing boats, we understand that he also refers to the relation between the human being at the edge of the sea in a timeless atmosphere. It is precisely here in the landscape paintings of the Baltic shore of the Brücke artist that we find many parallels to Maggie's paintings. Apparently, both Maggie and the Brücke artists found their way to secluded beaches on the Baltic Sea due to similar artistic needs and social developments. 
Here I brought a map with uh, some stars that I put inside. Here we have Sarema, and here we have Nidden, today in Lithuania, and then here the others. I have a little bit bigger map from this part, the south uh, part from the Baltic coast with here Nidden, today Lithuania. Then we have here uh, Prero, it's uh, in Germany, and we have the island of Fehmarn, and then we have the Flensburg, uh, like fjord, we call it Flensburg Börde, and here we have today, it's Denmark, the island of Alsen. So these spots I will follow up now. To start with Emil Neude. Neude was a member of the Brücke for six months in 1906. He's about 15 years older than the other Brücke artists. He was the first of the German expressionists to find motifs on the Baltic Sea coast, more precisely on the then German island Alsen, which is now Danish. The brush structure of his paintings consists of patches of color in rich, rich in contrast. And, and the, all the paintings, I have Conrad Mergi always on the left-hand side, so on, on the right-hand side are the, the other ones. Come on to Mergi is the dissolution of the landscape through strongly colored brushstrokes. The sky, horizon, and the shoreline can hardly be distinguished from, from each other. Everything is pulsating with pure color. While the pictorial structure in Maggie's works appears a little bit more controlled and systematic, Nolde's paintings, however, are more expressive and impulsive. Some other examples here. A fishing boat on the beach with, yeah, it's hardly to distinguish the sea from the shore, from the clouds, it's getting more and more one, one structure. And here another sun, so I think it's a very nice example to have this universal symbol of the sun here, uh, Neude together with Maggie in a very similar uh, brush structure. And of course, Maggie's famous works with this uh, sunset where the sky and the clouds are really the, the actors in the, in the painting. And finally, also important, are the clouds, which in both Neude's and Maggie's paintings are given a completely independent active role in the picture. So we are coming to the next one, Kirchner. I showed already another picture with this lighthouse here on the island of Fehmarn. In the tiny village of Staberhock, on the most eastern point of the islands of Fehmarn, Almost half of Kirchner's extensive annual production was painted in 1912-13. Despite their expressive painting style, the places and landscapes he depicts can be easily found today. Many of his Fehmarn pictures can be located on the basis of the characteristic erratic boulders on the beaches that we also know from Maggie. Among his central motifs is the striking lighthouse in the east of the island and, quite often, the curved horizon on the ocean, of the ocean, which indicates that he wants to catch the whole world in a small part of a landscape. So this curved horizon here we will find quite often. When it comes to the Motifs of bays and boats, Kirchner's pictures can be easily compared with Maggie's paintings. The sun and the dramatic red sky are further connecting elements between the two artists. Finally, both are fascinated by the cliffs with the distant view of a boat on the sea. Both are enthusiastic about the vegetation and the boulders directly on the shore, and both also depict the houses on their respective islands in an expressive manner. So here's some more examples. Here we have these characteristic fishing boats on a bay. These are both from Kirchner. Again and again he, uh, he painted these curved bays. And then of course the sun again, I put here Kirchner together 
with Maggie's fantastic painting nearly at the same time, perhaps on the same day, <laughs> painted, the same sunset. Another one with a beautiful red evening light and these boulders here on the beach. And finally the cliffs with one single boat in distance. But here again the curved horizon here and here the dramatic sky in Maggie's painting. Yeah, and also they are very close to the um, vegetation, to the plants directly on the shoreline. And finally, houses in Kurisare and houses in this, uh, uh, near this farmhouse uh, directly on the eastern point of the island of Fehmarn. Next one is Max Pechstein. Already in 1909, Max Pechstein discovered the small fishing village of Nidden on the Kurische Nährung in extreme East Prussia, now Lithuania. Also, Pechstein painted with a broader brush than Maggie. There are many motivic connections between the two artists. Once again, it is the small fishing boats on the beaches and near the shore that show the closest parallels between the artists. As with Kirchner, the sun also takes on a central, universal role in Pechstein's works, reminiscent of works by Van Gogh. I'm sorry for this bad quality, I had to take them from, from a book, but uh, we see the same interest in the motifs here again the beach with the small fishing boats. And here's also quite similar from the color palette. These are both from Pechstein, from Nidden, where he again and again paints these steep uh, dunes. And then again the sun, Pechstein on the right-hand side, and Maggie here. Very similar, this kind of very um, organic brush strokes that we find in both artists. Then I come to Max, uh, to Karl Schmidt Rotloff. On Pechstein's recommendation, Karl Schmidt Rotloff, another member of the artist group, also came to Nidden in 1913. His first seascape painting as early as 196 uh, was from the Danish island of Alsen, where he visited Emil Neude and that, it, uh, that one compares very well with Maggie's beach paintings of Will Sandy. Otherwise, Schmidt Rotloff too was attracted by the fishing boats in Sheltered Bay as an important motive for his Baltic Sea paintings. And then we go to Erich Heckel. Finally, we come to Heckel, who chose the tiny village of Osterholz on the Flensburg border as his Baltic Sea resort in 1912. Similar to Maggie, Hecke repeatedly painted different perspectives of the cliffs. In addition, his way of painting groups of trees and accentuating the sky with dramatic clouds compares well with Maggie's paintings. Especially, the apocalyptic effect of the sky connects both artists. Both give the dramatic cloud formation in their works an almost crystalline prismatic appearance. Here are some examples. Again, this cliff with quite dramatic sunsets. And here, these groups of trees, and then the, the clouds are getting more and more uh, like sculptural elements in, in the paintings. And I think this is perhaps the most striking example where the the rays of the sun is really kind of apocalyptic symbol which connects these two works from 1917 and 1918 20 quite close together. And also here we are getting more, a little bit more crystalline, more uh, cubistic structure. Yeah, and we come to the next one. With these comparisons, we end our journey along the Baltic coast. Because before I conclude, however, I would like to make a short excursion into the Alps. 
here on a small Alpine pasture above the village of Davos, Ernst Ludwig Kirchner had been living since 1917. After his mental and physical breakdown as a soldier during the First World War, he thought refuge here in the secluded mountain world where he lived until he committed suicide in 1933. Only 160 kilometers away from Davos, Maggie stayed in a sanatorium in Oberstdorf in 1922. This day motivates him to create some of his most exciting paintings. So here we see, this is a Lake Constance, and we see here the two uh, places where they were at the same time. Kirchner's and Maggie's panorama-like depictions of mountains and forests in the early 1920s are in many ways strikingly similar. Expressive gestures, the use of pure color, and a great freedom of abstraction characterizes the works of both artists. Maggie now works in a more expressive gestural style that increasingly dissolves form and gives the individual brush gesture more autonomy. And I have some more examples here. Very strong color directly from the, from the tube. Strong contrast, uh, complementary contrast. And here again, this kind of all over panoramic, more or less two dimensional um, structure of these works. With these parallels in mind, let us go back to the Baltic Sea pictures. It was important to me to find motives, moods, and perspectives that link Maggie's works particularly close to the Brücke artists. We can see that Maggie's works with landscapes from Sarema, Vilsandi, and later from Kluger Beach fit into a phenomenon of German expressionism that is particularly common in the years right before the First World War. Here, an idealized harmony between man and the world is depicted. Even though no figures appear in Maggie's Baltic Sea paintings, his work with their lonely lighthouses and isolated boats on the shore have a very similar message. Maggie's Baltic Sea paintings are thus part of an expressionist phenomenon that is related to the artist's escape from bourgeois conventions and life in the cities and a search for a universal harmony between man and nature. This longing led to paintings that gave unfiltered expression of the painter's emotion in the face of nature. With the beginning of the First World War in August 1914, the artists were immediately denied access to their paradises on the Baltic Sea. The German beaches, and probably the Estonian ones as well, were declared restricted military areas, and the artists had to flee headlong from their oasis of unity of life and nature. It would be desirable if further research could bring to light more evidence of Maggie's connection to German expressionism. In terms of motives from the Baltic Sea, we definitely have a good basis for this. Thank you very much.